So this is a little different video than we're used to doing. We, uh, my, this is my buddy Evan Smith. We go back to the water box in English town. We were like four and a half years old. You were spraying the I water. I was young. I was doing burnouts, and then here we are, 35 years later. And and this is Reverend Evan on YouTube. He's got his own channel. He's a Ford guy. You, 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 just for people who don't know you, I can't believe anybody doesn't know you. But for the <laughs> for the four people out there that don't know you, give right. them give them a quick who you are. So I met Tony when I was working at English Town. Uh, I worked everywhere at the track, burnout box. I had a five liter Mustang. So I was hugely envious of you and Neil, huge Cars Illustrated fan, loved everything you guys did no matter what you brought to the track. And then you got into magazines on your own. And then you guys got me into the magazine world, so then I became, long story short, editor of Muscle Mustangs and Fast Forwards Magazine. Big magazine. Raced my five liter Mustang in NHRA and did a little stuff on the street. You have like a couple of records, else. right? Set a couple of records along the way, class trophies. What's your favorite of, record? My favorite record is yeah. probably the setting the K stock record in uh, in uh, in my Cobra Mustang. See, I, I had the IPO stock record with my Mustang, and then Billy Meyer, the <laughs> sanctioning body, and right. eliminated. You remember that? That was like a crisis. It was me and Steve Collis and go. Wait, let's stop bragging about what we do. Exactly. Okay, and let's talk about this collection and tell the people. Oh wait, we have friends here too. Tell me, tell them who your friends are. So I got my man John, ace photographer, and his wife Elaine. John is a former SVE, if you remember the old school SVE engineer, he's a Ford engineer. He's Super worked on Ford engineer. all kinds of crazy Mustangs, the John Coletti era, he's got a lot of Ford history, and he's an ace photographer. I mean, he shoots NASCAR, he shoots all this really good stuff for Ford. Okay, but what we're here for now is this, we're at the National Parts Depot in Ocala, Florida, right? Yep. So, to, to set the scene here, this is just this huge building on that end of the building, is like the business, the regular business, you know, that so the National Parts Depot is muscle car parts and... Right, muscle car restoration parts, they have, I think, five or six or seven different lines, right. trucks, uh, GM, Ford, Chrysler, they sell. If you're restoring a muscle car, you got to know about NPD. I'm going to try to shoplift some stuff on the way out. So, <laughs> but anyway, all of the, uh, the businesses over there, but this side, look, turn around, look at this. This is crazy. This is their, their car collection. How many cars are here, Evan? Roughly 200 in this building. Okay. And what is unique about this particular car? See, I'm, I'm already in love with this stuff. What, what is unique about this particular collection? So, based on what you've probably seen over the years and what certainly I've seen over the years with knowing people who own these types of car collections, most people have to have a line of Chevelles, a line of B-body Hemi cars, 69 Camaros, those aren't as intriguing to uh, Rick and Jim Schmidt, the two men, father and son deal, who own NPD and this amazing car collection. So what they've collected is cars that they personally love. It's low mileage, significant American heritage cars. That is what I love about this. See, it's not just Chevelle after Chevelle after Chevelle, or Roadrunner after Roadrunner after Roadrunner. No, it's a Pontiac Bonneville, a Grand Prix, just a regular Galaxy 500 XL. No, there's not going to be a camera in there. There's probably no. a 289 I mean, in there. Stacked headlights. I love anything with stacked oh, headlights. Yeah. And these uh, the eight lug wheels. The eight lug wheels that are actually the, if you don't know about the Pontiacs, it's an aluminum wheel, and the back side of the wheel is also serves as the inside of the drum for the drum brakes. It's a one piece deal. So when you wear the brakes out, you got to replace the wheels. Crazy. And they're styled. I mean, they put a ton of style into doing that. Yeah. So. Look at this awesome Grand Prix. It's amazing. The style of the interior. Oh. Yeah. No. It's a. This is a. I love the little the, the console shifters they put in these things. Can you get Can you get a shot in that? That can little I, tiny bowl with the, the big button on it. He's okay if I just. He's cool. Okay. So we yeah, can. Yeah. We just have to be real careful. Like okay. Yep. All right. Let's. We have a lot of ground to cover. Yeah. Let's keep moving. Here's Here's what we're gonna do. Right. We're gonna watch the comments, and you guys. Tell us which of these cars you want to see full features on. Because we're only going to be in Florida now for a couple, another couple of hours, but he lives here. So we can actually shoot full features on these cars. We can run them on our channel, we can run them on your channel. Yeah. And uh, you're going to get your channel yeah, going. We'll start yeah. a channel. So yeah, just, just to do that's this. That's right. right. Yeah. So if you see anything here that's got particular interest to you, point it out to us and maybe we can turn that into a whole video. But we have to move fast because for us to actually get through this building, and not have two hours with the video here. Yep. We gotta cover some ground. So, 
And he see, anything see, I, 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 see, I, see, I see badges here. Yep. So you've That's got three block Fords. What do we got here? It's a 390 car. Convertible. I mean, Tony, what gets me when I like to look at a lot of these cars is this was somebody's new car one day. They pulled it away from the dealership with their dream. Like, we look at it as a classic, old, beautiful car. But imagine right. this was somebody's brand new car one day. It just blows my mind. No. The stories. But you see, here's the thing, right? Yeah. This car is from when I was a little kid. And I can actually remember being in dealerships with my families. Right. Yeah. Looking at stuff like this. So let's keep moving because I know there's a couple real significant ones. There's so, a 409. I know this car has, has a big history to it and some of them have the placards. Um, it's, it's a, That's an Amelia Island. Yeah. yeah. And it's a 409. And if I remember correctly, it's a stick car. Yeah, it is. Oh, babe, come here. Get a look at this. How unprofessional. I call the cameraman babe. Yeah. <laughs> right? Well, at least you didn't call me babe. Yeah. I will. Before the, you know. No, but I guess this is, a, this is a 327 car. 327 four speed. That's nice. Look at that shifter. See, they just don't make stuff like this anymore. Right? I mean, it's like, that's the thing. Today's cars just, these are just average cars. Exactly. And they just have so much charisma. Everything about them, you know? Yep. Right, so this, this car here, if you like drag racing and you were getting your driver's license in 1962, right? this would be a car that you'd want. So, if we could figure out a pop the hood, because these older cars are, uh, I'm putting that on you, Tony. Okay, here. What do you want me? What do you want me to do? Pop the hood. I'm it's not touching it. Something special under the hood here. Oh, there you go. This will bring John in. Well, you know, you need the Ford engineer. To, oh, exactly. To, right. That's why we brought. That's why this thing gonna work. This is why we brought a Ford engineer. Where's guys. Matt? When we need him. Is the release on there? I don't know where the release is on this one. Should we edit right. this or just keep it going so we all look like? Oh, here it is. <laughs> there you go. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. 390, I think this has, is it 390? But this one's a three on the tree, which is cool. That I know. So, this is a, guys, this is a five mile, this car has five original miles on it, really? right? Try to wrap your head around this. 100% 100 unrestored, 62 Galaxy has traveled less than five miles since new. And it's all original right down to the hose, belts, and tires. That's, that's just too much. Okay, so evidently this guy owned a dealership and every year he took he put one car aside to, to do this to. So this here is a five mile, an unrestored five mile old car. This is just amazing. Everything, every single thing on this, wow. See, again, I, Evan, I'm having flashbacks to when I was a, a mechanic in the 70s. Right. And this is the stuff that you'd work on, you know, because this is what was in traffic. Right. And, like, that, the, the filter, that, that old oh, yeah. car, all of this stuff was, like. But if you think this car is cool, come over here and take a look at this, because it gets better. Oh, look at this. I, I don't yeah. want anything better than this. this but is, it gets better. I'm going to stop right here. It gets better, because this is a slightly less option car, <laughs> and it's not black. But this, if you look under the hood. This is a 401 horsepower, 61, with three two barrels, Tony. I and a three that. on the tree. Imagine ripping the gears in this thing. Three on the tree. But look at those three two barrels. Yep. So now that setup right there is the, the one that the Chrysler six pack, the, first the Chevy tri power and then and the, for the big blocks, and then the six pack for the Chrysler is all, all evolved from this. Now this yep. one has mechanical secondary carburetors. And you couldn't get a four speed in 61, so three, three speed, speed was as good as it gets. But the interesting thing about this is, see these carburetors here? Yep. If you went to Direct Connection, if you, if you went to the Direct Connection catalog, let's say in the 1970s or 1980s, mm -hmm. and you ordered mechanical carburetors for your 446 pack, those are the exact carbs that you would get. That's crazy. Now this, this is before my time, obviously, yeah. but wasn't like the term, if you had a Thunderbird V8 under the hood, that like a kind of a yeah, stigma. Yeah, that's like a Chuck Berry type of thing. Yeah, right. Thunderbird yep. V8. Thunderbird right there. V8. Come here. Look at look at oh look at the tack on this thing. And kind of a tricolor interior. Yeah. 
Oh, that's just that's this just is a drag racer special, right? The sixty one. This is too sweet. Hey, you know what? I want to go see something mundane. Let's go. Let's yeah, seriously, yeah. I want to see something very run in the mill. These cars are awesome, right? But I want to see something that's just like we can wander around and do whatever. Oh, here you go. Look at go this. For a joyride. We already passed. This is one of my out. favorite cars in here. Uh, this Gran Torino is one of my favorites because it's a four speed and it's black. <laughs> What motor is in this one? I think this is a 351. Uh, yeah. Yep, that's a four speed. So this is a year or two newer than Stosky and Hutch? Uh, older. I think this is a 73. Uh, yeah, this is a 73. So it's a Cobra Jet four speed, actually, 351 Cobra Jet. Okay. Which is one of the last Cobra Jet engines. I think 73 or 73 or 4 was the last year that they called anything a Cobra Jet. Wouldn't Cobra Jet automatically have a, f a fresh air or a scoop? No? No. Nope. Okay. So you're the Ford guy. Yep. I only, I only speculate. Yeah, that all the scoops were done by then. I love the color on that T-Bird. T-Bird's cool. That's close to like the Chrysler Butterscotch. Yeah. Check out some of the signatures on this uh, Cougar next to Next to the other Cougar. Cougar convertible. This is, I think, like 71 or 2 style, John, right? 73 mm -hmm. maybe? Yep. 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 But look at some of the signatures on here. From yeah. they're, they're from a lot of TV shows. So uh, Emergency yeah. 51. Stan Musial. Baseball. Jimmy Carter. No one. Mary Tyler Moore show. This was, I think, some kind of charity car, if okay. I remember correctly. Oh, it was like a charity giveaway car? Yeah. Uh -huh. Telly Savalas. Oh yeah, so it's like a who's who of 1970s TV. Correct. Personal. That Lincoln. Wow. What? Mary Tyler Moore. Yeah. Right. I mean, look at the chrome and the steel. Audrey Harper. Look at the design. Look it just went into the tail lenses. Wow. And this is back in the day when every year they made drastic yep. changes to vehicles. Yeah. Right. Look at the back window. I mean, when do you see a back window like that? Mm. Right. Oh, really. This yeah. slides up and down. down. Yeah. Yeah. It slides yeah. up and down the center. Crazy. This it's a power too. window, yeah. But well, this one, this one's a retractable. Well, oh, isn't this a retractable also? Tony, cut back up that way because there's some interesting cars oh, yeah, out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because this is. Super, yeah, these are both. These yeah. are both retractable. This is a retractable heart. Is this a retractable? No. No, because you wouldn't be able to well, fit this no, in this the truck. This is a hardtop car, but there's this a retractable is, roof down the way, well, which is a hardtop. Okay. Look down the lines of the car. It's like. Miles of steel just going in one direction. Just beautiful. Some interesting Bonneville Pontiacs. Wow. Come here, get cut, get her. Just, just get a profile shot of this car. Now these Continentals here were owned by the Ford family. Like this is built, this is Bill Ford's, I think, own. If you read the sign there, it has some info. But these cars were built for the Ford family. Uh, what do you got, John? In Detroit Lions this Blue. This is William Clay Ford's Detroit Lions Blue Continental. I think it even says WCF in the horn yeah. button. Yeah, WCF in the horn button for William Clay Ford. Mm -hmm. Cap. You just, you just kind of get this artwork on the, on the trunk lid. <laughs> I remember these weren't Lincolns. This was just a Continental. Oh, just a Continental. That's off the chain. Custom built for the Ford family. That's beautiful. There's some lifts in the rug too. Don't trip, Kathy. Okay. All right, come on. Let's. Okay. This is Benson Ford's Mark II. He was in charge of Lincoln Mercury at the time. And then Henry II. 56 Continental. This was Henry II's car. Now, these cars were unibody, right? Oh, I don't know. And the, I would have to hop under and look. These cars are unibody with the front fenders actually part of the unibody. I know the Continentals were. I mean, uh, yeah, the, the four-door Continentals were unibodies. Yeah, I'm pretty sure these And they were, these they were the same awesome. way. Yeah, unibody. Yeah. What's that? Look at Absolutely, this. Absolutely, this is unibody. Yeah, so so you guys, you Chrysler guys are used to unibodies where the doors and the fenders come off, right? 
This is a unibody that the front fenders are actually part of the unibody. The only thing that comes off of this car are the doors. Wait, is and that the exhaust? The hood. Is yeah. that an exhaust, exhaust pipe? Yep. External? Yeah, Look at is. that. It's crazy. See? Sorry, look at this 59 Ford, and look at how, how every little different part is styled. You've got the, like the, the diamond shape in the grill, the emblem, the hood, the hood emblem ornament. There's so much different little funky styling going on on yeah, this car. Like, like look, at, look at here. Tri, uh, tri-color interior. This, this is spotlight. a Skyliner, so this is your retractable roof. I mean, look at the amount of chrome. Yeah. See, Evan, I totally geek over shit like this. Look at the detail on the spotlight. Look at And it serves as the mirror, too. If you look at the back of it, it's a mirror also. Yeah. It's a what? It's, it's a, a mirror? A, a, yeah. it, mirror. That's, That's how they mirror. say it in New Jersey. Yeah. New Jersey. Coffee, mirror. Yeah, look at this. Coffee. Hmm? And this is a oh, retractable yeah. cool. top. So this, I know a lot of you younger guys have never heard of this. This whole, this whole thing, the trunk lid comes up this way, yeah. and then the roof gets sucked out into the trunk. That's neat. Mm -hmm. There's another one next to it. Let's go to the back. There's some cool stuff in the back. It's gonna blow your mind here in a minute. I wanna see that cutlass. Oh, over here? Yeah. And see what's next to it, like 77 Grand Prix? Yep, yep, yep. That's beautiful. Look at all the Lincolns. See, these cars are funny because they're nearly extinct. Yeah. Right? These, this was the, okay, so in 1975, 1976, that, that range 77, the Olds Cutlass was the number one selling car in this country. And if you go back, like where I was in New York City, that whole tri state area, right? These cars were everywhere. I mean, literally everywhere. Every block had at least five of them, right? This is a G body, right? No, this is pre G body. This is, um, is it? just before. What did they call this? A body? No, the um, GTO Chevelle style. Was none, of us, none of us are GM guys. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> they got T roofs. It's, it's the yeah. intermittent, it's the inter yeah. intermediate size. So these things were everywhere. And then they just disappeared. Like, and I don't know why, because they were solid cars. They weren't really prone to anything particularly, you know, failure-wise. No, cars of that day, every gasket leaked after 80,000 miles. The transmission wore out. Corrosion I think it protection. became yeah. cost prohibitive to keep it on the road. Yeah, but right. yeah, I'm telling you, man, these things were solid. I worked on them all the time. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and they don't, the thing is, it's, such, it's a beautiful, it's like a timeless body style. But they're all gone. This one has 13,000 miles on it. And it smells new. It looks like it's got the swivel seat. See how the door shuts? Yeah, like a brand new Look, T-roofs on this one and the Pontiac. Wow. Smoked glass, you can see down into the that right. Pontiac cockpit. I think we're starting to run long here, right? Yeah. Let's let's see what, what we got in the other room here. Yeah. I, don't, I don't, can you go in there? Yeah. Okay. can you? Matt gave me free reign in place. Oh, there you go, you got the keys. All right. I got the and of course, the brand of GT40 just. So now a lot of these cars are also used for parts. And they fix them here. They got a little shop here, Mercury Montclair. With wow. a T-Bird with the uh, dog dish hubcaps. So you got two tone and you got tri tone. Look at this thing. Ah, uh, sorry. Two four barrels. There's your Hollies, John. Oh, I'm There's your Holly carburetors. Here. And this, this is a mail engine. A lot of people don't know. Yeah, the MEL. Yeah. Do you want to tell people what a mail is? I'll so let you handle it. Okay, so, so you, you think of Ford being like Chrysler, where Chrysler, you know, they, they had univer engines that were the same across the board. The mail was the, the, the Mer Mercury Edsel Lincoln yep. motor. So you've got the big block Ford of the era, which was, like, was the FE, and then you've got the mail. And these things went out to, I think, about 460 cubic inches? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. It, 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 odd, odd placement of the distributor, kind of like the Y block. Yep. Right. Actually, it was like the next advancement of the pushrod V8 for them as they went from the Y block and not quite an FE. Well, it looks like a big Y block. The rockers yeah. are very Y block like. It doesn't have the odd wall intake runner arrangement, but uh, yeah, look at that with a pair of Holly carburetors. You guys, 
So, so this is what year is this car? 1850. This is. This has got to be like a 56 or seven. 56 or 57. Look, look what's going look at on this. at the top of the windshield. Can, can you imagine? Kathy, today? look at the top of the windshield with the antennas, and the vents and the styling at the top. I mean, <laughs> this is too much. There was zero concern for aerodynamics. It was all style. devices. <laughs> aerodynamics were for commies. <laughs> you know. But you see what I love about like okay, people who screw around with cars today, like they don't really understand the origin of things. The Holley carburetor, everybody seems to, you know, so you, you go and you buy a 600 vacuum secondary Holley carburetor. That's its original incarnation. This is before it was available in the aftermarket at all. Yep. This was just the factory carburetor that Ford used. And it's like literally you take that carburetor and, 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 and it's exactly interchangeable with the, the 600, let's say, that you could go and buy today. And the, and the manufacturer just said, we have a lot of steel to move here. We only have so many cubic inches. We need to make these engines make more power. Let's just throw another carburetor on it. Like it, wasn't, it wasn't like a racing yeah, thing. Some more just, we need more power right. to move this, this, all this metal. And, and I agree with that sentiment, you know, more Let's carburetors. Cruise. This is awesome. Come here, look at that. I know I, I, <laughs> I totally geek out over this stuff texture. like this. It's got yeah. texture to the body design. Come on, look, at, look, look at the Continental kit. Right? And then, and then look at this. Look at this hole. Ah, uh, this is too much. I mean, the way this, the skirt flows, and then it's got like a T-Bird-ish kind of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. They look like later T-Bird. Yeah. That's great. Amazing. 66 GTO. Here's something in your wheel. I was talking to this Dodge truck, man. Oh, there you go. Back here is like the finest of the 80s. Except, of course, we have some older stuff, but um, Corvette ZR1, GNX. I mean, this was the hottest car of 1987, I think, as far as quarter mile. Well, Expensive for the time, but it had an a innovative rear suspension. About yeah. the widest tires you could get on a car for '87. All right, ready for this? Go for it. Okay. Yeah. You know this guy. You know the you know the place, right? Mm -hmm. Open a open a glove compartment. Oh yeah. And we also, me and Tony, used to call this car the enemy. Yeah, that's exactly right. The hair dryer. <laughs> this was a hair dryer, right? We we did not like these guys who own these cars very much. Hold the door for me, Tony. Yeah, yeah. Is uh, the book in there? This book is. There, there should be the one, the, the GNX book. Yeah, the McLaren book's in here. The GNX book is not. He might have that in his office. Ah, uh, because I'm quoted <laughs> in the book that they put in the glove compartment that he's in. Door shuts that, like new. I did that uh, the drag test uh, on the, the Regal right. called uh, From Buick with Balls. Yeah, and, I remember that story. Yeah, and they, they quoted me from that story in the book that they put in the glove compartment. Of That's these awesome. Things. I actually remember that. Yeah, I do too. Keep I remember that. So Fiero, I mean, you know, just preserved cars. Yeah. Um, this was actually a camper special, and Ford called it that. Yep. Camper special, big mirrors, camper top. If you wanted to go camping. Well, the, the, the camper top's an ad, but yeah. Well, that's a base camper top. Then you had the, the ones that actually sat on top of there. And yeah, that, that went overneath. Yeah. You could sleep on top of the... But look at the condition on this thing. Oh, I know. Well, look at this thing. More enemy car, T-Bird. Yeah. This is the original. To, to protect the paint back in the 80s, Ford used to spray on a protective coating that the dealer had to wash off before they delivered it. I remember that because it was on my car. Yeah. And it is still on this car. This is an original car that's never been, see, Every, everything's still inside. Yeah, this is this the is anniversary bird. That's this is crazy. the motor train car of the year. Now, this is a sticker that was on every car that all of the engineering or quality people at the plant, okay. if they drove this car home to do an evaluation, what they call an M10 drive, okay. um, they'll drive it. It has to have less than 50 miles to be sold as a, still sold as a new car, but we have to notify the owners that, hey, it was put on, we put 22 miles on, somebody was 11 miles from the plant. So they drove home and then they drove back and that 22 miles is exactly what we're looking at. You John, know? didn't you do a lot of work on these T-Birds? As far as the uh, yeah. stuff? Yeah, did a lot of the rear end work, brakes. Yeah, a lot of work on this car. 
No, that's great. So yeah. the paint, the, just just so that people understand, the paint on that is not faded. That's pre-new. Yeah. Right? That's exactly right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's beyond new. It's mm -hmm. pre-new. It's got that coating yeah. on it. Yep. Crazy. All right, what else we got? I, I, I know we got a oh, lot man. of stuff to go. We can make some tracks here. Some of this stuff's relatively generic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but just like so everybody's cool. got one of these. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 90, uh, three, four, five Lightning, kind of the power trucks. Yeah. Yeah, are, the those Mustangs, are the Mustangs here? Yeah, they're, they're yeah the we missed way. them, but they're, they're on the other side way? of the wall. Okay, then you know what? We can do this after on a different video. We'll do this on, okay. Let's so, go look at. Yeah, okay. if you like this video, right, we're going to do a companion video on his channel. So, um, I want to go to the Mustangs. I want to end this with the Mustangs. Okay. okay. How fast can we get to the Mustangs? Just a few second walk. Which we can look them up. Yeah. <laughs> I'll race you too. Can you? Fast. <laughs> See, I find this to be so much more interesting Yo, than a typical muscle car. I was really hoping you would love this. No, I'm beyond in love with this. I'm telling you, see, I'm not really a hot rod guy. I'm not really a drag race guy. I'm a car guy. You know? Well, I mean, I love the muscle cars. I mean, I'm, GTOs have my heart. But once you've seen a 389, 32 barrel, four speed GTO. Yep, that's exactly the Everybody knows the story of these. Right. But I like still, telling the story beautiful. that nobody knows. Let's zip over the Mustang. Some Ford love right here, 05, uh, 06 Ford GT. John Fletcher. Right which there. is fantastic. Fred Goodenow. So interesting thing about one of those, they, the Ford engineers were trying to get these to run tens and they couldn't do it. And him and his team hit me and Jim Camposano up right. and said, you gotta get one of these things to go in the tens. So they sent us an engineering car. We took it to English Town, long story short, I got it to run in the tens. Um, what did it take? Uh, it took, we put a shorter rear tire on it, but okay. then actually this tire was better. It stuck a little better. It just took a hard launch and me power shifting it the way you taught me. <laughs> it just needed to be driven. <laughs> but the first couple tries, we went like 1107, 1104, 1102, and John Coletti was there. He drove there from Detroit. Now, John, if you don't know who John Coletti is, he was, so I don't even know how to describe somewhere. him. He was just the big wig of, um, Ford's hot rod engineering department. Right. That signature there in 2006, that's Camillo Pardo's signature. Mm. Camillo is the designer of this car. Correct. Um, Coletti and Fred Goodenow are the two that really got this whole concept together. And they had Camillo do it, and he just did a spectacular job. Just a wonderful job. You, you look at this car, it's, it's not an original 66 Ford GT but you just know it's a Ford GT. It's got the heritage. It has the heritage, Beautiful all lines. wrapped up in a brand new package. And it ran in the tents with, yeah. with Evan driving it. And who taught you how to drive? My man right ah. here, Tony. <laughs> you did, your power shifting techniques. Coletti said to me, he goes, this thing will run tents today. If it doesn't, we're lighting it on fire. And me and Campy looked at each other and then he went, with you in it. <laughs> yep. So we and got- And he, yeah. So Kathy, look oh, at these Lincolns. Look, I feel like Lincoln's like crazy. Yeah. Hey now. Hideaway headlights. I had a guy who used to call Reverend. Uh, well, I'm even say yeah. Never mind. Never mind. Yeah, we'll cut through here. Yeah. Um, again, just a Ford Fairmont. Nothing super special, but it is the hundred millionth Ford ever built. And yeah, one we of the earliest see. Fox bodies. One of the that earliest, 78 is, uh, is the first year. Yeah. yeah. Yep. All right, let's cut through here. People don't know that. Underneath, this is a Fox Body Mustang, pretty much. Which, if I was to do anything Fox Body today, it would be off one of those. Oh, yeah, L a little lighter. It's yeah. light as a Mustang, so. Now we get to the stuff that I'm a little more knowledgeable on. So the first thing I want to show you guys is, if you're Fox Body Mustang fans, there's been a lot of specialty cars over the years. But Rick and Jim have two super special ones. All right, so if you're into Fox Body Mustangs, which Tony ran the heck out of his, and I kind of followed along and um, got a Fox Body Mustang. I wasn't brand specific growing up, but it had a really good V8. It had a manual transmission, and it was light. So you knew it was going to go fast. These guys, they pioneered everything, and 
you know, I took the lead. Well, you after guys that. turned it into an art form. We were just out there banging gears. That, but that's what inspired all of us. My, Ford my produced era. something yeah. we can go hammer on, and we went and hammered on it. Yep. Yeah. So. Yeah. 79 is the first year for the Fox Body Mustang, even though the later fuel injected ones are more popular. These two cars here are, this is the very first, based on VIN, Fox Body Mustang to roll down the assembly line. The VIN on this, I got it over here, it's, the, the, the number of the VIN is 100001. Right, now oh. they didn't build them in order, so this might not have been the actual first one to go down the line, um, pre-production cars. But this is, I think, the first VIN car, and this is the last. This is the last VIN. So there might have actually been cars after this, but the last VIN, this has the highest VIN, and they have both of them sitting yeah. next to each other. It's like incredible. Bookends. It's the bookends. Well, yep. I mean, you see, so they, they, they would be, there would be prototypes, there would be production, pre-production cars, there might be show cars, there might be crash cars, all kinds of stuff. But these two right here represent the, two, the first Mustang that was available to be sold to the public yep. with a legal VIN. And this is the last Fox Body Mustang. That's crazy, right? Yeah. Here, look at this. I mean, literally touching both ends of the Mustang spectrum. So and leaving like grungy Italian fingerprints ah. on everything. So Tony, I don't even know if you know some funky stuff about the 79s. Open the door and look where that door handle is on the inside. Kathy, you'll want to look at this. It's not where you might think it is. The way that door opens, it's like, it's like crunching a potato chip. Look, right. look where the door handle is on the inside, way down at the bottom. It's not up here. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, It's down yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. So the engineers, after a year, decided that's a terrible idea, and they moved it up here. Because what if you have to get out of the car in a hurry, if there's a crash or something, you're going to have to reach down and find the door handle? This smells like a brand new car. How many miles are on this? The very, very low mileage, I believe. I can't see the odometer from here. Okay. You can check it out. It's got 14,000 miles. How are you? Hi. Great. For 15,000 miles. What's happening? No. Oh, Rick knows Okay. Yeah. All right. And then here's the last one. 93 convertible. Option nicely. Now, how did he manage to acquire? You know, we got to find Rick at some point. I got to have him tell those stories because it's amazing how he came across the two cars. And it, I don't think he was like overly searching to have the first and the last. It just kind of happened. One of those deals. But if you like late model Mustangs, Tony, it gets better. <laughs> it really does. I mean, there's some stuff across the way that we'll get to in a second. But so the ultimate for many of us Fox Body Mustang is the 93 Cobra. 235 horsepower, Ford needed something to go a little beyond the GT, so it got better flowing heads with bigger valves, a little more cam lift, 172 rockers, that awesome Cobra intake manifold, and late model Mustang people consider this to be the ultimately styled 93 Mustang, the, out of all the Fox Bodies, the styling on the Cobra with the smooth front fascia and the smooth sides and that rear spoiler is pretty much it. They also made an R version of this. Interesting race fact about this, this car was almost the 1989 anniversary car. Yep. It almost was. It was in silver. It was going to be issued in silver. had the Cobra GT40 engine. And it just didn't make financial sense to release that car. But all the parts were there. And then in 93, it did make sense. So then they brought it into production. I'm sorry. So sorry I missed this era. Yeah. You know? This is an incredible car. And this is, that's the car I based my stock eliminator program off of, was the 93 Cobra. So in NHRA trim, I got that car to go 1065. 1065. Yep. Wow. So 1995 comes along and Ford says, all right, let's build something extra special. We're only going to build 250 mm -hmm. of these. Yes, so this is a 95 Cobra R. Tony, you look inside, no back seat. Oh, yeah. The V6 cloth interior based around the base car. Yep. And this is the last 351 Mustang. So it's got a 351 Windsor. And it's got all of the delivery stickers. Look at this. Yeah. And unlike the five liters, which were roller motors, this was still a flat tappet cam. No fooling. This is flat tappet? Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's it's a hydraulic flat tappet. If my, my, my brain's not always functioning right, but I believe it's 300 horsepower. Yes. And this has the same GT40 heads as the 93 Cobra. Mm -hmm. So they use the same heads, a very similar intake. 
And these cars, even though they were fast, we got one of these to go 12s in the quarter mile at about 105. Even though they were fast, it had it did not have anywhere near enough induction for a 351 because it still had the heads they used on the 302 and the intake they really used on the 302. It must so they were they were yeah they were underwhelming. I mean, 300 horsepower for 95 was still good, but and this is a Celine supercharged Celine. So I've, you know we know Steve Celine. They took this car to the next level. Vortex supercharger. They actually cut the intake and added plenum to feed the motor. It's non-intercooled. But you could buy these new at Ford dealerships, and they were screamers. Um, I want to say, I don't know if it was a ringer from Celine or not, but I did. I think we went um, 1120 at Muscle Mustangs in one of these. At Carlsbad Dragway, I tested it, of all places, which is closed now. Um, but these hold, hold the mail. So then in 2000, Ford went to the next level in developing the modular motors. We'd gone from a pushrod engine now to a dual overhead cam engine. So this is a 2000 Cobra R. They only made 300 of these. And like the 95s, you actually had to have some form of a racing license to buy one of these from Ford. They are street legal, but Ford kind of mandated that you have some racing license. Some sort of credential. Yeah, they wanted you to have it. Now the 95 car, you, you'll know the info on this, actually fit, I think, an SCCA class and people took them racing. Grand Sport. Yeah. These didn't necessarily fit a class, but it, this was the predecessor to everything cool that Ford built as far as dual overhead cams. Is that more, just one big plenum? Yes. Really? There's, th this is the upper. It's split right here, if you can see. So you, you take these bolts off, the upper comes off. I'm just and, saying the and upper what is you just see, an empty... Yeah, it's just a there's big a no, in there. Well, well yeah. there's runners that there, the, the runners are actually crisscrossed like this. Okay, so the this valley, this bank, the runners are coming in from over here. It's coming down. It kind of looks like the... Cross ramp. Yeah, yeah, yeah cr cross ramp intake. Yep, so these ran low 12s and a quarter mile. Okay. Ford rated this sure engine at 385 to. horsepower. It revved to 7,000. And I'm going to tell you, with side okay. exhausts, this thing sounds glorious. So... A couple neat things, and I'm going to have you add to this, but if you come over here, Kathy, look at how aggressive the front alignment is. This was the factory front alignment setting. These cars were made to go around corners. It has an IRS rear, six-speed transmission, um, Recaro seats, no back seat. I mean, this is a race car for the street in the year of 2000. Mm -hmm. I think we ended up going There's no 12, sound deadening in the car. 1230s and a quarter at like 112 one or 110. And then Camposano asked me to take the splitter and the wing off. So we took that stuff off at the drag strip and I picked up like two mile an hour. I believe it. Yeah. Next to it is a 93R. So the 93 we talked about before, this was like these other two cars. This was the predecessor to the mm -hmm. 95 and the 2000. Mm -hmm. So they didn't change the engine at all, but they added coolers on the R. If you look through the... Um, on that side, I think, if you look through the fog light hole, which the fog lights were deleted, they put the oil cooler there. This also has no back seat. They only made 107 of these. So this is super rare. This is the holy grail of Fox Body Mustangs. One of these recently sold for 140000 at auction. For a Fox Body Mustang. For a Fox Body Mustang. Yeah, and this one has low miles too. 174 miles, Tony. Now, John, what was the story with the wheels? Because these, this is the same wheel I used in 94. These wheels, are, well, the, basically this front brake package, when Steve Anderson got with all of the racers that were currently racing Mustangs back in 89, 90, 91, he said, guys, what do you need to win races? Because we're getting killed by the Camaros and Firebirds. What do you need? And they said, yeah, we need more fuel. We need more brake. We need the car lighter. And so basically, this is one of the things that they did. We knew that we had the 1994 car coming up, and what the 94 car has is a lot larger brake. Okay, it's got an aluminum PBR caliper in the front. And the problem is, is that brake needs a 17 inch wheel so that we can have adequate clearance to the rotors and everything. So we needed to come up with a wheel in a hurry, but to go through and certify a wheel, you have to do so much, you know, the, the crash right. testing, the durability of the wheel, just to make sure the, the, the sliding of the wheel into curbs to make sure that you can live. 
And so that, that's a time consuming process. This wheel had already completed it because they were planning on using it in 1994. So we said, hey, we can put it on the 93 and it'll be good. But the marketing guy said, no, 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 because then you'll know what the 94 wheel looks like. So it's just painted gloss black. There you go. And it's also like a five lug, right? looks like a police car. Yes, it is. It's yeah. also a five lug. Yeah. Right, we're running long on the Mustang stuff, and there's so many other things. Yeah. Actually, what I, what well, I, I want to show you one more Mustang. One more Mustang. Totally in your wheelhouse. We're gonna go check out one more Mustang. One more Mustang. We're gonna go old school. A couple Shelby's. I know we've, 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 they are. we've seen the Shelby's. This is a Boss 429. But this car right here, Tony, unassuming, right? Very unassuming. Unassuming. Black dog dishes so in the sense like of rally anything. wheels, yeah. but it's a 428 drag pack car. Oh, really? Yeah. No. And it's not a GT. Look, it's a base Mustang. I see that. Yeah. It's not a GTA. It's not a GT. It's just a base, base Mustang. John, throw the hood up on that bad boy. Yep. So it's, it's got like the 410 rear and 410 rear with it with a. Uh, oh, lock. look at that! And look at that lump. <laughs> that the 428 is lump. just beautiful. The full two eight lump. Until you want to change the spark plugs. And no, uh, no shaker. <laughs> no, I uh, see that. No shaker or I even a fresh air uh, scoop. I didn't think this was possible. That's why I knew you'd like this car. Cause this, imagine you pulled up next to this guy on the street. No, yeah, no. This is, this is like the really the secretary's car. This is like Mary Tyler Moore's car. Yeah. 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 And Kathy, look over here. So I mean, Ford guys no shaker hood scoops. So you on a four twenty eight Cobra jet, you would fully expect to see the shaker. Absolutely. But, and there's the man right there. How are you? Good, how are you doing, Evan? Great. How are you? Oh, man, I'm <laughs> busy. Yeah, it's my man, Tony. Hi, how are you doing? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. We're actually, oh, we're not live, right? We're just no, not live. Introduce. Yeah, Rick Schmidt, NPD. We've already talked about NPD, mm -hmm. what you guys do here. Mm -hmm. But give us a little more insight to what we're seeing, and we were actually talking about this car that yeah. is one of my favorites, but I know you probably have a little more backstory, and if you don't mind hanging out with us for a few minutes, we'd no, no, love no, to have you time. talk about a couple yeah. of the cars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that uh, black sport roof, I mean, we bought it already restored, but the gentleman who, uh, who did the restoration in North Carolina, he bought it from a buddy who bought it through uh, one of the Ford uh, uh, company car auctions, oh, wow. program car auctions. Yeah. It was, uh, I've got the original Eminger uh, invoice mm -hmm. on it, and it was special ordered by uh, uh, special performance division. Right. If I'm getting if I'm getting the terminology right. It was it was it was ordered by the friggin' Ford Copo office, <laughs> and then it was uh, kept there for about a year. Then it became a track car at Riverside Raceway, and then in 1971 it got auctioned. So because it's like it's a base Mustang with all the freak. good go yeah. fast. Stuff. Yeah, it's a deluxe sport roof with pretty much every option you could. On one, so. so listen, this is what I want to do. I want to do videos on like each of these cars deserves its own video. Right. So this is, I, I want you to come back here. Now, I, I, you have the coolest collection <laughs> I've ever seen. I've seen a lot of collections. Thank you. Right. Just because it's so, you know, it's right. It's mm -hmm. like you guys have the right balance, the right balance of car. There are a lot of them are just everyday cars. And nothing. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. I mean, really. At it, these uh, days, I'm, some of those everyday cars are harder to find than a friggin' GT500 is. I know it. I know it. <laughs> you know. I know it. So. But I, I, listen, we're going to wrap this up now. Do it. Yeah. And then we'll okay. So, but yeah, I want to thank you again for letting okay. us have access to this. And like mm -hmm. I said, in the future, Evan's going to come here and shoot some stuff for us. And, and you know, mm -hmm. you guys. Okay. Yep. So, that's it for now, right? We're running along. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow.